Innovation weiterdenken und Zukunft einfach machen. Hallo, Klaus Reichert hier. Ich bin unabhängiger Unternehmensberater und Business Coach für Innovation und Business Design. Ich begleite engagierte Unternehmerinnen und Führungskräfte sowie ihre Teams mit Smart Innovation auf dem Weg von der Vision zu enkeltauglichen Leistungen. Meine Mission ist es, Unternehmen und seine Menschen kreativer und innovativer zu machen. Ich arbeite remote von Baden-Württemberg aus. Im Smart Innovation Podcast spreche ich mit engagierten und kreativen Menschen über Innovationen, über Innovationsmanagement, Unternehmertum und Verantwortung, gerade im Kontext des Klimawandels. Zuhörer können bei den Live-Aufnahmen mitmachen und Fragen stellen. So wird Innovation lebendig und leicht umsetzbar. Die Live-Aufnahmen sind mittwochs, Episoden erscheinen montags. Den Link zu Terminen, Newsletter und dem Transkript finden Sie in den Show Notes. Bleiben Sie auf dem Laufenden und folgen Sie der Show, wo immer Sie Ihre Podcasts hören oder auf klausreichert.de-linkedin. Und denken Sie daran, es gibt kein Ende von Innovation, nur Starts. Mein Gesprächspartner ist Max Stucki. Er arbeitet als Foresight Analysis Manager bei Futures Platform, einem auf Strategic Foresight spezialisierten Unternehmen mit Sitz in Helsinki in Finnland. Wir unterhalten uns über die News- und Trendsuche der Futures Plattform. Heute machen wir ein Experiment, unser Gespräch wird in Englisch stattfinden. Hallo Max, great to have you on the show today. Hallo Klaus, es ist super toll hier zu sein. The, your name Max Stuki, it sounds very, very Swiss, but you are in Finland. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Finn, but my family from my mother's side has roots in, in Switzerland, hence the name. Max, what is your job at the Futures Platform? What, what do you do? I go by the title Foresight Analysis Manager. So what that means in detail is that, of course, I'm engaged in the analysis work. So I'm engaged in delivering the foresight analysis. So forward looking intelligence products on various topics and, and trends, but also that involves very much developing the analysis process further, understanding how we can deliver better analysis and better insights to our customers. That's like the one side of my work. The other side of my work is is consulting, foresight consulting. So I I take part and I manage various uh, foresight projects for our customers. For example, related to scenarios, horizon scanning, and and so forth. So, my job has kind of two sides to it, between which I I balance. You work in foresight, and I think that is a very very interesting profession, interesting thing to do, based on data, based on creativity, based on observations, also yes. and lots of information. And yeah. I think that's a fascinating job to do. The company you're working for is Futures Platform in Finland. Just as a little bit of background, Finland has a very strong position and has had for some time in, in future studies and foresight. So it is quite natural that Finland also has its foresight companies. It is, it is no coincidence in that sense. The company itself, Futures Platform, was started in 2016 by uh, people with a background in foresight, and they realized that there is a need for a tool, a digital tool that allows organizations, but also individuals to do foresight analysis in, in an easy, easy manner, in a manner that allows them to systematically conduct, for example, horizon scanning, a fancy name for looking for the trends and the signals that could impact you and your organization, and, and also to draw conclusions based on those, those findings. And hence, they started the company that develops this digital foresight tool for exactly those ends to allow people to engage in foresight with little effort, if you like, in the sense that you can start engaging right away and you don't need to always do one-off projects. So that's what we do at Futures Platform. We host the tool, but also we deliver consulting. Very often it's, it's about doing some, for example, scenario projects that are based also, we're using the tool there, but it, it like helps people to get more familiar with the tool and get their own foresight activities started. So it is really our aim to help our customers to start systematic foresight processes in their own organizations. I was very impressed by how easy and smooth you make that process. It's very easy to start to work with your platform. It's very informative right away. It's, there's no 
technology voodoo or something behind starting to use the whole thing. It gets very complex if you want to use it right away deeply. I wanted to talk to you about that. And I understand that we we need to get into the depth of, of the functionality and and what we're and, and give a better understanding of, of what we're talking about. But we also need to have a a context. We have another episode where we talk about the foresight part of your work. But give us a bit of that context, please. Foresight how is that embedded into the tool? Because it's not just a new search tool that you offer. Exactly. And thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. To put it in context and what foresight is, if, if it could be a little bit foreign word for uh, some listeners. So foresight in essence is the, the practice of cutting the future of some domain. And usually, of course, if we take private organizations, in other words, companies, they are very interested in what happens in their own field and they want to understand the, fur, like the future developments. But foresight helps them to take a more holistic view, to study the operational environment in its whole breadth and, and, and whole width to, to understand that what could be those future trends or wild cards that could affect our industry, that they're not directly related to us. So. In essence, foresight is about studying the future to understand how it could affect us. And of course, it takes data and analysis, but also the ability to connect the dots. And, and that takes creativity. Like you, you really need that, in, for example, if you're thinking about scenarios. And how the foresight is then related to, or how the tool, if you will, delivers the ability to do foresight. It is quite, quite simply in the way that it allows you to do the, the, the basis of any foresight activity, which is the horizon scanning, the, the ability to gather and collect information about the operational environment, it allows you to do that very quickly because we have a lot of analysis material that we have done ourselves or customers. You can conduct the horizon scanning very easily. And that is usually a part that takes, it, it can take many days, even weeks, if you are doing it in the traditional way. But we allow it to be done very smoothly and, and, and quite fast. And after that, the analysis in itself, like how it's done on the, on the platform, it is collaborative in a sense that you can engage a lot of people on the platform to make sense of the trends, to bring people into discussion and to discuss together and analyze what would these developments mean for us. And the, mm -hmm. and the, the platform facilitates that. It, it, it is a, it is a platform for people to make sense of the of the future. Then what this means in practice, we have various tools to to do this, either to to rate, give ratings on 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 trends, for example, how, how people see their development, or letting people to comment in groups about the trends and so forth. So in practice, there are a lot of tools to do various things, but how that relates to the foresight process then in uh, on its, if you will, in its most basic fundamental level is that it allows you to do the collection of information and the analysis of the information and the, the ready-made intelligence or foresight intelligence product. So you just can export it. Long answer to a short, short question. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I think we need to give an idea of, yeah. of what we are talking about exactly. right now because yeah. else everybody will be lost. So yeah. let me let me sort of summarize what what I saw. I yeah. see something based in a web browser, so I can probably use it also on my smartphone, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But I can access your platform in a web browser. I start with the lounge area where I get an overview of the my groups and radars that I have created. There is some handpicked material for me. There is help articles, but there is also news articles to start mm -hmm. with. Then there is the content section where all the news and data and all your scenarios are shown and are searchable and, and yep. there's very good filters. And then there is the radar section where I can right. have my, create my own radars. Yeah. And this is actually the very, very interactive part. It looks very simple. And then you start clicking on things, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and making it interactive, adding tags, mm -hmm. for example, adding comments and so on. Mm -hmm. And then 
lots of information is starting to pop up. There's videos, there's text, there's background infos, there's news articles, there's lots of information that your team has created and put yeah. together along these different phenomena. And I think this is where it gets really, really interesting. We have put a lot of effort in the analysis ourselves. Like we really try to understand trends and signals and, and, and changes that could, that are either affecting us right now or could affect this in the, in the future. And we want to offer our users our best understanding. How, how the things could develop and what the implications are, because the implications are highly important. It is not only the, of course, it's always interesting to know something, but the implications then make it tangible in the sense for people to understand that how this could affect, for example, my, my own work or my life or my organization. Uh, we, we place a lot of emphasis on that in our, in our analysis work. I'm showing our participants a quick overview of what we are just talking about. So this is the launch part. This is uh, the content part. If I click on one of these phenomena, I, which you have defined based on your observations and data, mm -hmm. there is all this information. There is also the connection to other phenomena, mm -hmm. which I think is fascinating to have all these things to start sort of journeys on my, my own. And I can also add comments and stuff like that. We can click on, t on this other tab and get a lot of news articles, which you have selected from a lot of news sources that link to the original sources. And then there is also the radar section that allows me to dig deeper into specific areas of my own interest and, mm -hmm. and have discussions with my team, with my company. Where it starts to get really interactive, I found, is the radar section. It's what do we see? What do we get when we see, when we start the radar section in, in the Futures platform? So the radar is the basis of all the collaborative work. The radar represents the future, you could say a future of you. How do you view the future of, for example, your company at the moment? And the radar, of course, is, is built in a sense that in the center is the present and the further out you go, the further out in the future you are looking. And the radar then is populated by these dots, these phenomena or trends. And those phenomena, they represent the, the, the result of the horizon scanning of the activity in which you are trying to understand what things could affect you now and in the future. When you have done the horizon scanning, you, you have the view of the future that you consider relevant at the moment. Of course, you can, you can update this at any time. And the, the idea is that you keep it updated and, and you can share it very easily. And you can say, this is the future view of our company at the moment or our organization. And you can ask your colleagues, are we missing something? Or you can inform that this is, um, these are the things we think you should take into consideration when you are making future plans. To just put things a little bit into context, you see various different colors here. The green ones are things that we consider are strengthening in importance. They will become more important, more influential at the, at the, in the time frame they are settled, set in. The red ones are wild cards. So things that have low probability, but high impact potential. So if they take place, they would impact the world in a significant way. A very good example of wildcard was the last latest pandemic we had. Blue ones are, they are trends, but which are getting weaker, which unfortunately in, in some cases can be quite significant. For example, the pollinators or untouched nature. The area of untouched nature is, is, is getting low, smaller at the moment, as is the number of pollinators, or, or it has been at some time. Maybe the pollinator populations will will recover hopefully soon. And then there are the gray dots, which are the weak signals. So something that we don't have a lot of data on, which is interesting, which should be monitored, but we cannot say if it will become a trend because we don't have enough data. So usually the gray dots are something like that we have spotted in some scientific journal, some latest scientific innovation or breakthrough, for example. And then if you click the dots, you get, as, as we have seen here, you get more information, you get the analysis that we have done, and it is then sectioned in the brief summary and then the background information and, and the further reading section, in which we have the sources. And here you can see also, for example, the tools, 
the rating tool with which you can ask your team to rate the trends, how they see them in, if, if you consider using some axes, for example, here we have the impact and fit with current strategy axes, like is it high impact or local impact? And does it, how does it fit within the, our strategic context? So that way you do your horizon scanning with the tool. You can do that with a team, with a group of people from a company or around a company. Yes. And after you have done that, you can sort of educate everybody in that group and ask for their opinions along several lines and that way sort of understand if there is a fit for example for the current strategy of the company or not or also of the importance for for the company so it's because we have seen this that there's a lot of beeps and phenomena. you can't work on everything at the same yeah. time so you can sort of that's that that helps you prioritize also the things you look at as a company. Indeed. And it is fully built to be, co be collaborative, as, as, as you mentioned here, to, to engage people, because very often we, we work in silos, as, as the saying goes. We work in silos, and even though we want to communicate with our colleagues, very often the information that we have may go unused. We, we don't share it because we just don't have the opportunity or time. And making this collaborative allows the space to share information that would also otherwise be unutilized. And that's why the collaborative aspect is so important because we need to understand that how the trends could affect us, for example, from the perspective of, of multiple teams, because the, the, the team, all the teams, they, they have different contexts. So, so they have different views of things. So this allows the, the sharing and enriching of the views and perspectives. You make all this information easily accessible. You ask people, individuals, for their comments and let them vote and, and so on. So you ask for the wisdom of the crowd, let's put it that way. What I like here a lot is, is I think that helps a lot to generate good insights also and, and get priorities. If you ask a, a larger group, right, five people mm -hmm. might not be enough, but it also means that there is not the single one person who has the single, the single truth in a company, for example, mm -hmm. it's something that is sort of more democratized with your tool, well, I think. Indeed. Indeed. Yes, that, that is very true. And since we are doing collaborative foresight in, in many ways here, and the idea is also to democratize is good word. It helps us to gather the information and uh, people, they can voice their opinion. Also, very interesting thing that follows from this is that when we, when you gather the, the views of people, and you really start to analyze them, they also reveal the things, for example, which may go unnoticed. So gaps in knowledge. Is there something in our organization that we have not taken into consideration about some topic? And it is, it is very interesting and it is very useful, but you can only do that if you can gather the views of the, of the people, of, of your colleagues, and then you understand what are the gaps in, in our understanding. That might trigger also some other actions, for example, yes. filling some of the gaps, exactly. getting together, bridging some of these maybe differences that you have with other yes. teams or other departments. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, that, that's, the, that's the aim. Very cool. All these news articles, yes. all the information that you're using, where does it come from? The information we use comes from, you could say, put it very briefly, from open sources in the sense that, that there are sources that we can access and use. There are, of course, closed sources that are not accessible and that we cannot use, but uh, open sources that can be verified by anyone. So that means naturally newspapers, news sites, publications by various either public organizations or, or private think tanks, or if you wish, publications by companies about their new innovations, for example, Science, universities, absolutely. Scientific journals, very often used. Such sources that, that anybody can access. Who would ideally use your tool? How many people do you think or would, would normally uh, the company have? Or would, what would they do? Which team in the company would use it? What's, the, what's your, your experience here? Who is it for? Well, innovation teams used a lot. 
that's that's our experience and and that's a very happy experience because that's those are the people we want to really reach all well strategy naturally quite quite un, unsurprising and and various planning functions also some sometimes risk management uses it and well then th- there are foresight teams within within private companies but also public organizations like teams dedicated to foresight and they of course are the, the the people we really want to aim our our tool and services for as well because they are in the field and 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 they are really battling with the with the amount of information they need to absorb and and how to then turn that into into actionable insights so i i would say it's, it's very it's very versatile and we have customers from many backgrounds, even some IT departments and uh, such teams that you wouldn't necessarily think immediately that, okay, they should be doing foresight, but they are. So it's getting more popular and, and the use cases and, and the teams using it are, are becoming more versatile, you could say. It is simple to start with your tool. It is a browser-based tool, so there's yes. no installations and so on. And one of these very first steps is using the news search mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and sort of go on a discovery journey of of the phenomenon that you have uh, observed and and described. Also, there is a, a free trial that that you mm-hmm. can do. But what would be some other news search tips that you would have for listeners for innovation teams to do, for example, without using any tools at all? Is there some simple, mm-hmm. easy tips that you have? Absolutely. One simple, like maybe the most simplest trick, but that I myself find very useful is just if you find a good source and, and that you have followed for some time and you have verified it is good, do save it somewhere. Either use an Excel or, or whatever format you feel appropriate and go from time to time to that source and, and, and check what they are offering or, or what, what's their latest news are. In time, if, when your list grows, hopefully if you are doing this continually, you can, you can start to categorize the, the various news outlets. In, in some, you are looking news about the economy. In some, you are looking new ideas for about politics or, or some other topic. So the categorization is, is very important and the gathering of good sources. That's, that's like one thing that I have myself found extremely important. However, it, it should also be noted that keeping an open mind in the sense that when we are looking for it, we very easily resort to the, the news outlets we know ourselves or have known for years. And we think these are, these are enough and these are good. But we may have some resistance to try new sources as we always have as, as humans. And, uh, but having an open mind to, to check even new sources that may seem a little bit odd to us at first. To see what they offer and to see if they're any good, to make the judgment, okay, should I be following this? So, of course, in the age of the internet, the, 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 the internet is, is, is full of all kinds of news providers, but only by going them through yourself, you can, you can make the judgment of how, how this, or, or could this be reliable source? And then I, I would maybe say the third point is when somebody presents you information, some very interesting piece of information, always ask them where, how did they source it? What's the source? Where did they get it from? They may have, of course, there's the link, but, but sometimes the link doesn't contain the source or the original source. And if you, if you find the piece very interesting, go to the original source and put it in your list. Start to follow it. The, it's, it's all about, I would say it's all about the source management in having good news. It, it really is in, in many ways. Yeah. So those would be my main three topics. I completely understand the thing about the sources because over time you develop or you, you, you aggregate a, a good list of places to read, to mm-hmm. gather information that you can trust also because you have sort yep. of verified them along the, the process, along the way. Exactly. And the verification is, is very important. We have, luckily these days, we have the websites that do verification or at least do some kind of this of the news source in the sense that are maybe somehow politically oriented or, or, or some such. But nothing really beats the verification by your own eyes to see how it is. And of course, it's very good to listen to others, what others think, and to have, have the viewpoints from there. But doing the verification your, 
yourself is important. And then when you're following more sources than just, let's say, three or five, you start to get the idea that, okay, the reporting here is like this and the reporting there is like that. And then you start to see a little bit maybe how you could build a coherent and com more complete picture of, of the events in the world by, by following source. This is something that everybody can do. You don't need to be a big company to do something like that. Absolutely. Highly, and it is highly recommended for anybody who wants to stay informed on, on what's, what happens in their own country or in the wider world. And that was also one of these triggers for why I sort of developed a very easy to use search, new search concept, because everybody needs to do it, but not everybody has all the money and the time mm. and so on to, to have all these professional tools at hand, like yours, for example. But what I think we need to understand is one of these main differences is the foresight background that specific knowledge that you put in and that you sort of work on all the time yeah. to, to keep it fresh and, and, and reliable. And also the community part, which I right. think is the, the interactive part, which I think is very, very valuable. Exactly. Doing, doing foresight is very surprisingly, you, you need good sources. You need good sources for your information and you need to have them at hand. And that is something that we have worked very much internally. And it really has been a learning process to understand that uh, like the, the gathering and, and monitoring of sources is, is of highest importance. You, you could say even like the blood, like blood circulates in body in foresight, you need the information to, to circulate through our organizations to make, keep things fresh. Part of our tool has since the start being that we offer in the analysis, in the trends, the news for our customers and true by making curated news searches, search queries that are directed at certain trend or phenomenon. And then the customer can read those news. So it has taken a lot of effort to, to really do these queries that would return um, relevant news to these trends and topics. But that's, that's not enough. That's not enough that you have good queries because if, if you are sourcing with any query from the entire internet, basically, you can get whatever, you can get anything. Or you, even with the best of queries, you can get, let's put it in this way, you can get very strange information. And I, I think we all have a, some kind of experience from that. So I, I would say that even if, if you're not using our tool, but uh, it is still advisable to combine good search queries with a good list of sources to combine the queries with the sources. So you have, you have like a double check there, double filter in the sense that you are making sure that you are getting good information. Of course, there is the time to do a search that incorporates the entire content of the internet, but that's, that's a different use case when you are doing the, the, the trend analysis, you, you really need to focus. So that's where the, the list of, of the trusted sources, so to say, comes into play. We talked about the, the news and trend search of, no. about that, the, the online tool that you offer in our other conversation. We'll talk about your foresight work. I'm really looking forward to that. We'll have all the links in the show notes so we can easily connect these episodes with each other. There will also be a lot of links to to what we talked about today, maybe a screenshot just to show, to give an idea of what we were talking about. Max, thank you very much that you took your time today. I think that was very interesting. I, I really like the tool and I like that interactive community part also a lot because it gives so much power to the individual and creates lots of common knowledge or joint knowledge from individuals. And I think that's, that's a very good idea. It was my pleasure being here. Thank you, Klaus. Das war der Smart Innovation Podcast. Er wurde mit einem interessierten Publikum live aufgenommen. Vielen Dank fürs Dabeisein und Zuhören. Diese Episode gibt es auch zum Lesen. Der direkte Link ist in den Show Notes. Noch kein Abonnent? Die Show ist überall zu finden, wo es Podcasts gibt. Weitere Informationen und meine Kontaktdaten sind bei klausreichert.de-podcast. Dort gibt es auch eine Übersicht der nächsten Live-Aufnahmetermine. Ich bin Klaus Reichert und das war der Smart Innovation Podcast.